I've said it before, but I'll say it again. James and John come to Jesus and say they want to sit, one at his right hand, one at his left hand. Who's sitting at the left hand of Jesus? Every morning, we, every Sunday morning, we confess in the Apostles' Creed that Jesus ascended into heaven and is seated where? At the right hand of God. So if Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God, who is sitting at Jesus' left hand? The Father. So one, James or John, wants to take God the Father's seat. But I answered this week, I saw something different, right? Jesus says to James and John in this, in this passage of Scripture, can you drink from the cup that I am to drink, and can you be baptized with the baptism that I'm going to be baptized? Where did Jesus come into his glory? Say it louder. On the cross. On the cross. So who was that? Because there actually was somebody at Jesus' right and left hand. They were both thieves. Were, that, were they prepared to take the positions of glory with Jesus on his left and right hand? That's a study for another time. This morning I ask I have a question for you. My question is, who are you going to serve? Now that may seem like a silly question. But I think that's what the Gospel of Mark asks us over and over and over again. You see, we think that we're set up as human beings of our own making, right? I did the sermon in Texas. I didn't actually wear my boots this morning for that reason, but I did a sermon in Texas about pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps. There's, there's straps at the top of your boots, right? They help you pull them up. Because if you try to just shove your foot down inside of a boot, it doesn't work all the time. You've got to use those straps to pull up the boot so that it comes onto your foot. And now I've got my pants leg all messed up. <laughs> but you can't put your boot on without using those straps. You have to have those straps there to be able to pull them up. And that's exactly what each and every one of us has to have in our lives. We can't do it by ourselves. Even though we think we're self-made people, even though we think we've made everything on our own, we haven't. Martin Luther said, and I quote out of Christian Liberty, Martin Luther wrote, he never actually said it, he wrote it, a Christian is perfectly free, Lord of all, subject to none. A Christian is perfectly dutiful, servant of all, subject of all, subject to all. You think, well, he just contradicted himself, right? Yes and no. We're all free to do whatever we want to. Jesus in his glory died on that cross to set each and every one of us free to do whatever we want to. So does that mean you can do whatever you want to? Jesus died on that cross to make us servants or slaves. Right? And it's interesting if you read in here when Jesus says to James and John that you will be servant, will be your servant, and you will be servant or slave to all, right? We can choose who we serve. And whether we think we serve someone or not, you're actually serving someone, right? How many of you know the Bob Dylan song that comes to mind when I ask you who you going to... I got at least one person over here that knows it, right? You're going to have to serve somebody, it doesn't matter who you are or where you're at in your station in life. If you're someone who is the chief executive officer of a company, if you own your own business, if you're the lowly peon in the office that has to do everything for everybody else, you serve somebody, right? And who is it that you serve? If we think we don't serve anybody, we're fooling ourselves because if we don't serve anybody, we're serving our own self-interest of building our own selves up, making our own selves, right? It's that bootstrap thing again. My pants are still messed up, so it's okay, right? You've got to pull yourself up by your straps. If you don't have the straps, you're not going to be able to pull up the boot because you can't make it on your own. You can't, you can, I tried it. You can try to force your foot down in there. Well, it's easy when your, your foot's halfway in, but you don't do it all on your own. You see, 
Here in the Gospel of Mark, we just ended this passage, which I should have read the first, the verses 3 that come right before this passage, which is the third time in the Gospel of Mark that Jesus predicts his death. Here, we've been in this passage of Scripture now for about a month and a half in September, the middle of September it came up, with Jesus predicting his first time that he's going to Jerusalem and going to die. He's been on the way to Jerusalem now for six weeks, telling his disciples over and over again that he came to die. An interesting thing to this passage, I want you to go back and look at it later tonight. In Mark chapter 8, we didn't read it. It wasn't part of our lectionary. And next week we'll miss the next one because it's Reformation Sunday, so it'll be a a different reading. But in Mark chapter 8, Jesus heals a blind man. Then they start on the way, and Jesus predicts that he's going to die, and he asks the disciples, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, right, the great, the great quote from Peter that builds him up, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God, right? We're going to follow you. And not three verses later, Jesus is t- calling Peter Satan and telling him to get behind him. Because they don't get it. Jesus heals the blind man. He tells his disciples he's going to die. They continue down the road. Jesus tells them again he's going to Jerusalem he's going to die. They still don't get it. They try to shoot children away. Jesus says, let the little children come to me because if you don't come to me as one of these, you're not going to enter the kingdom of God. And the verses right before James and John this morning coming to Jesus to say, we want to sit one at your left and one at your right is Jesus for the third time saying, I'm on my way to Jerusalem and guess what's going to happen? They're going to arrest me. They're going to put me underneath dreadful things. They're going to kill me. And these disciples still don't get it. And next week, we should get a passage, the passage right after this in Mark chapter 10, verse 9, it starts at 45. Jesus cures the blind man Bartimaeus. Now, if that just doesn't speak volumes, I don't know what will. Jesus cures a blind man, predicts his death, predicts his death, predicts his death. Disciples don't get it. Cures another blind man. We can't see it. We don't get it. Because it's not about us. Right? And that's what we always make it. It's always about me and what's best for me. It's always about my life and what's going to happen for me. It's all about me doing the best for me. And is that what Jesus came to teach us? Jesus didn't come to tell us that it's about me or it's about you. Jesus came to say it's about me. Meaning it's about Jesus, not about me. Right? And Jesus here at the end of our passage said something that should make all of us cringe and wonder a little bit and is a wonderful one-verse sentence to have a huge Bible study that Jesus came not to be served but to give his life as a ransom for many and perhaps here we can hear Jesus' description here of him saying giving his own life giving of himself as a ransom for many not as Jesus buying us back from whoever Jesus would be buying us back from because either way you go with this it's not good he's buying us back from either God the Father or the devil that's why I said make a really good Bible study to sit down and talk about who is Jesus ransoming us from but that's, I don't think that's what he meant it's not Jesus buying us back but instead it's Jesus paying himself paying himself in order to rescue us from our delusions That we are somehow so important that everything revolves around us and that we serve our own self-interest and our own self-needs. Right? Maybe He did this to rescue us from our delusions that we are somehow self-sufficient, self-made, independent men and women. And from this point, His whole life, including His self-sacrificing death, challenges not only our assumptions but the very powers that be with the surprising and life-giving revelation that as we lose ourselves in service to others, we actually find ourselves and live a more fully 
wonderful life than we ever could have done before. Jesus' example and sacrifice are validated in His resurrection and for that matter in our own experiences as we give ourselves away in service and love to discover a depth and quality of life that we never could have had before. When we give up the fact that it's all about us and stop serving us and we can actually serve the other and serve Jesus, that's what it's about. So I ask you this morning, Who will you serve?